Happiness through curiosity on the Ranveer Show. Welcome to TRS Clips. I'm going to ask you sort of a more practical, wild question. <laughs> okay. okay? Uh, I do believe that within our lifetimes, we're going to see a lot of missions to the moon where we'll see a lot of humans kind of exploring the moon. Um, there's a whole... Half the moon is completely dark all the time. It's yep. just the way uh, yeah. physics works. Yep. So when we talk about the dark side of the moon, one side of the moon has been dark forever. And you don't know what that's kind of led to because when you compare to the ocean where parts of the ocean have been dark forever, yeah. now we go down there, in places where sunlight doesn't reach and you actually see life, then you see crazy shit, basically. <laughs> so yeah, makes those, me, those makes fish me, look weird. <laughs> yeah, it makes me wonder what's on the dark side of the moon. Can there actually be life in hostile conditions like that? Can there be... Something else. Can there be like crazy volcanoes or something? I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll know once we have, um, once we're able to explore more. Mm. Um, and, uh, and I think what's important is making sure there's a communication network that we're able to effectively communicate um, when we're on, whenever, you know, wherever we are on the moon. Um, <laughs> I, I, so I did, yeah. I did electronics and telecommunication engineering. Oh, yeah. And this is basically what e ENTC engineering is yeah, it's yeah. communication yeah and that's really important for space that we have that network uh, and the means to communicate effectively back especially if we have humans there um and actually there's a um mission launching monday was i think the last time i checked it was uh june 27th um of course launches if there's any weather it'll get delayed but it's a it's a small it's a small satellite basically um called capstone going to the moon um, and they're going to be testing um, faster communications um, with less lag and delay so that maybe in the future that we'll have a network of small satellites providing effective comms back to mm. Earth for satellite, for humans to use, but also for scientific data. So you'll have a lot more coverage. Speaking about ENTC engineering, yeah. communication uh, is something we take for granted because of our mobile phones. Like if I want to call you the assumption of the average human being is that I'll dial your number and probably some kind of a wave will go directly to your phone, but that's not how it works. It goes back to the service provider that yep. you're using. Then they have their own range of networks. Then there's a transfer from their range of networks to your service provider's yep. range of networks, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And if you're in different countries, it becomes even wilder. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, my question to you is about space and the engineering of it. Is it like if you if I want to call you while you're in space or that mentor of yours who called you from the space station? Yeah. So is there some sort of a wave that hits one of the satellites that's orbiting the Earth and then that satellite sends it down to some technology built by NASA or by Virgin Galactic yeah. and then that kind of deflects it to your service provider? Yeah, it's all through relays of satellites and okay. to ground stations. And a lot of the ground stations, there there's some that are government owned and operated. There's commercial owned and operated. There's a lot of actual commercial companies that are now getting into the communications world. I mean, they've always been there. Um, but you've seen this advent recently um, in the last few years of small satellites um, and they're satellites that are uh, much smaller than traditional satellites that can be the size of a school bus. Um, they're like probably this big and can go a little bit, can go bigger as well, but um, they're, they're called CubeSats, uh, small sats. So they orbit Earth um, at a much lower altitude. So their life is actually shorter. So mm. they stay on orbit for, you know, two years, two to four years, instead of uh, a larger satellite that'll stay on orbit for 30 plus years. Um, and these small satellites can cover a lot more of Earth because you spent, send a lot more up there. Mm. Um, so they're creating a network um, that can cover a lot more of Earth and they're being, they're able to now provide communication services to areas of the world that aren't, that aren't as developed and do not have the luxury of cell towers everywhere. Mm. Um, and the advantage of small satellites is that when you send them up, um, you know, their lifespan is so short when, you know, when you send up, you know, they'll burn up in two to four years, you'll send up another set of satellites and they'll have the latest technology. Because as you know, we went from just in the last, you know, two decades having no cell phone, like brick phones to basically supercomputers in our, mm. in our pockets. 
technology, especially in the electronics side, especially in the miniaturization of electronics, is advancing quickly. So if you have more opportunities to send up the latest technology into space, I mean, it's always an advantage rather than sending up one payload for 30 years that will, whose technology will age quickly in our, you know, in the current environment mm. to sending up satellites much quicker with the latest technologies on board. And you're seeing that industry, you know, flourish. Mm. Uh, do you get internet in space? Because internet is basically a collection of wires on the Earth's surface. That's what people don't understand about the engineering side of the internet. Because people associate the internet with Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that the internet in space is some sort of a super Wi-Fi router that's sending out. Yeah, it's all through satellites still. It's all through satellite okay. relays. Gotcha. Um, for us, uh, we hope that people spend their journey since it's not <laughs> even a flight, not tweeting. <laughs> You'll have plenty of time for that on, on Earth. Um, but for us, we will not have Wi-Fi on board yet. What about the International Space yes, Station? They, yeah, they have the means of internet as well as, um, uh, you know, calls and communication. Have, have you spoken to any of them about spacewalks? The, I have, the astronauts at yeah, the space station? I have not. Okay. Um, but I, every time, NASA always uh, live streams their, their spacewalks. So mm. it's always great to like, honestly, just go on YouTube and see an astronaut out, you know, <laughs> out in the space environment doing, doing work. It's very cool to see. Thank you for watching this clip. If you want to learn more about this topic, we've curated a playlist just for you. And here's a link to the whole episode.